Today, we're taking a look at how you can create your own DIY war scene of sorts, and this was inspired by Avengers Endgame. Of course, it looks nothing like it, and that's why I say inspired. Thompson brought up the moment in the film where Captain America is laying in the dirt and debris, and that got us thinking about how we could create our own war scene with our hero laying on the ground just all jacked up. But before we get into that... And action. No. I'll kill no. you on Get three. out. And get out of my office. Action. We're not do you said you were gonna do it in your stand-ups. Action. No. Josh Connolly here, and boy do I have some good news for you. From June 24th to June 30th, we're having our end of spring sale. Nearly everything on the store will be up to 60% off of all that filmmaker goodness. <laughs> we also have two new packs from Rampant Design, the Distortion Toolkit, which has over 2,000, yes, you heard me, 2,000 drag and drop distortion effects. Wow, we wow, we wow. And then we have chamber effects. This is 56 drag and drop ink flow clips. This is another one that's great for transitions, but also has a ton of VFX applications and title design. Holy whoa! <laughs> All of our new packs, including the new Fantasy LUT pack, will be available at 30% off for the first two days only. So, mark that on your calendar and come rob us blind! Can I, am I done? Is that it? So is that, was that good? Ryan, I'm looking right at you. Why are you not responding to me? Oh, sorry, I was reading the tweet. What? Were you even recording? Thanks, Josh. But jumping back in, we have our shot, which originally looked like this. And this shot originally looked like this shot. The first thing we decided on for this scene was to shoot inside. And there were a few reasons for this. First of all is that if we shot outside, we'd have to shoot very late at night. Secondly, the weather has been a bit unpredictable and actually rained on us while we were setting up. And along those lines, we wanted to be able to have full control over everything so that we could create the scene exactly how we wanted. But Josh is the one that set it up. So let's hear it from him. Action. What? Rolling action. Action on what? Sound speed, action. You, action on what? You didn't say we were action. doing it. You, you said we were done. What are you, Josh, on Three, what? Two, we one, didn't talk about Josh. anything. So to get this done, we really only needed to fill out a relatively small area, just enough for me to lay on, and then we'll extend the rest later. So the first thing I did was go over to Home Depot and grab some dirt. I grabbed five bags, which cost around 15 bucks. So I brought the dirt back to the warehouse and threw the tarp on the floor, which is the very same tarp that saved our lives back in 2013, when we shot proximity. But with the tarp down, I put a black blanket on top of that. This way, if I move the dirt around, you won't see the blue tarp beneath it. And it'll give a little bit more shielding on the sides. After that, I threw in some bullet shells, which we have a huge box full of bullet shells from when we shot the gun sound effects pack. Which was also 2013. It's a productive year. After that, we just grabbed some branches to toss in and we were good to go. For the costume, I just raided our wardrobe room, which is just a room full of stuff that we've collected over the past 10 years of doing this. For the color of the shirt, we went with a light gray because originally in our tests, I wore a black shirt, which made me blend directly into the dirt, which obviously didn't work at all. So we put blood on my head and covered me in dirt, which Ryan enjoyed way too much. <laughs> I did enjoy that. Thanks, Josh. The setup was incredibly easy and the lighting was very minimal as well. I had two lights giving us a nice warm reddish orange light hitting Josh from the opposite side of camera, which simulated the glow from the fire. Then to bring this up, I had another light with the same color bouncing off the wall to fill the area a bit more. And finally, we had an aperture light bouncing off the ceiling with a steel green gel to give a nice cool and subtle fill to the scene. The one thing we weren't able to do with the lighting is make it flicker like fire. Josh and I were the only ones shooting the scene, so we had to skip that detail but in post, we were able to add a flicker by adding curves on an adjustment layer and boosting the highlights, and then we could put a wiggle expression on the opacity to make that flicker. It's an easy and subtle addition, and it helps that illusion a bit. We also shot this with my pocket cinema camera. This thing is, is seriously insane. I know I keep saying that, but the more that I use it, the more I love it. I still can't believe this thing is under $1,300. I'm gonna dive into my full thoughts about this camera in the coming weeks, but man, do I love it. While shooting this, I decided to go 60 frames per second to push that surreal vibe a bit more, and I didn't use any rigging and a lens that did not have IS, which is image stabilization. And the result of using no image stabilization and no rigging on a light camera like this doing handheld is getting that micro jitter, which looks terrible. But in slow motion, it gave this extra off surreal sort of look, which I dug. In post, I graded using DaVinci Resolve, which I'm also in love with. I know some of you might be thinking, yeah, but look at all their 
lights, the camera, and Resolve, well, you can get Resolve for free. The camera is cheaper than most DSLRs, and you can do exactly what we did with the lighting with DIY lights, like this bar light we made a few years back, some can lights, and spray painting bulbs or DIY gels. After that, it's just about framing carefully to get what you need without having to do a lot of work in post, which the only two shots we did any VFX for are these two here. Both were pretty simple, and we'll show how we did them after this quick PSA brought to you by NordVPN. Yeah, step back for me. Let me talk to you about NordVPN. Why? Using the internet without NordVPN is like taking a shower with a stranger. It's weird, Ridiculous. awkward, and they're probably looking at things you don't, don't want them to. So start protecting yourself now and get 75% off a three-year plan by using the coupon code FILMRIOT at nordvpn.com forward slash FILMRIOT. And when you do use our coupon code, you get a whole extra month free. That means that's a whole nother month of creepy perverts not looking at your giblets. Don't call them giblets. I travel a lot for work and all the work that I do is web-based, which means I have to be on public Wi-Fi in places like hotels and coffee shops. And the scary part about that is anybody who cares to look can see into all my private data. Stop looking. And that's why you want NordVPN. You just get an account, download the app to your computer or phone, turn it on, and that's it. How, why are you even in here? This doesn't even make sense to what you're talking about. What it's doing is hiding your IP address by redirecting your connection through a remote server, making it seem like you're somewhere else entirely. Can you be somewhere else entirely? No, hold on, you're gonna like this part. Which means your ISP no longer can see what you're doing, and that means no more throttling, no more targeted ads, and if there's a show on, say, Netflix that's only available in another country, you can select Select that country from their list of 61 plus countries and you're in. That actually is pretty cool. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Please leave. They also have a Chrome extension, Android and iOS apps, military grade encryption, no data logging, and they're the only VPN with a perfect score from PC Mag. So stop taking showers with strangers. Or your brother. Jump over to nordvpn.com forward slash film riot, use the coupon code film riot and get 75% off of a three year plan and a full month free. Stop using the internet without NordVPN like this and start using the internet with NordVPN like this. Thank God. No, thank NordVPN. Logo. That's good advice right there. But jumping back in, let's add that sexy fire. First, we bring our footage into After Effects. Thompson tracked the background in Mocha AECC, which we've shown how to do a few times, so I'm not gonna go into that here. But once that was done, he created a solid, and using a layer effects gradient, he chose colors from the footage to fill out the background and linked it to the track. Next, he had to do a bit of roto work on Josh for when there's overlap between our original background and Josh, and he used cutout areas from an empty plate of the scene and placed bits of that ground throughout the background, lowering the opacity and using blurs to match it all up. Then to feel the space more, we grabbed a free stock image and cut the tree out so that we could place it in the back. And finally, we grabbed stock footage of fire, which we got from Action Essentials 2, as usual. But Thompson tossed it in, positioned where we wanted, linked that to the same null with our Mocha tracking data, then set that to screen, blurred to help it blend into the scene, and added a couple layers of glow, and we have our fire. For our top-down shot, just like before, Thompson tracked the footage in Mocha, then once again masked out sections of our clean plate and changed the scale and position to cover the sides of the frame showing the end of the set. Then we linked that to our track. We also added a couple layers of smoke stock footage to help fill the scene and some branches on the side so it didn't feel so uniform and clean. And that's it, we had our scene. And not to beat the same point into the ground every other episode, but as always, it's about being creative to come up with ways to accomplish things that at first don't really seem doable. And like I mentioned before, you don't need a ton of money to do it. The lights could have been all DIY and you don't even need to add VFX if you didn't want. You could just shoot around like we did for the rest of the scene. There's always an approach you can take to make it work. So go try your own version of this and share it with us. Of course, you can hit me up on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ryan underscore Conley. Check the notes below for the rest of our social links and get a link to that sexy three-year subscription to NordVPN. That's it. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Yeah.